got mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little quiet. Feels good in here, right? You guys ready for an exciting Monday or what? Let's just jump right into it. Phil Tony is going to uh, Austin, Texas, the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. The show that you're at right now if you're listening to this podcast April 21st. That's where we're going to be. We're doing stand up a bunch of places too in the next couple months Corpus Christi, Providence, Rhode Island, Calgary, Canada, Chicago, Vegas, Iowa University, <laughs> Madison, Wisconsin. And other fun things, TonyHinchcliffe.com for tickets. Make some noise again, everybody. It's Monday night. We have a ton of comedians, people, normal human beings spread out that signed up. Brian, how are you? It's Brian Redband. Hey, guys. Brian J. Ebel, drawing the episode. Is Jamie Vernon back there? Uh, I'm excited about life. Uh, we have a big show Wednesday if you're around here at the Comedy Store. We have a secret show. Todd Glass just got added to it. Miss Pat, Rod, Randy Lickey, Brody Stevens, a bunch of people there. It's a stand-up comedy yeah. show this Wednesday night at 8.30 in yeah. this room that you're in right now. Yeah. Live at the Comedy Store on the Sunset Strip. Um, let's get into the show, shall we? You guys like hilarious uh, comedy guests? Yeah. I do too. Any fans of uh, one of my favorite shows in all of comedy, Roast Battle in the room? Yeah. I'm a big fan. And uh, last night they just wrapped up season two of their yeah. huge, huge tournament here at the Comedy Store. And so, in honor of one of my favorite shows, Roast Battle, I have booked the two champions all time of Roast Battle. Let's see how loud this place can get for the great Mike Lawrence and last night's big winner, Frank Castillo. Champions of the world of roasting, a world in which I love very much. Make some noise one more time for these hilarious <laughs> Mike, you've been a ton of time, Stone Cold fucking assassin. We have you can blast. just look at us and realize that roast battle is a writer showcase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, one for one on knocked over beers on Jake's <laughs> One of Mike's trademarks, the slobber knocker. I just love that when someone bombs tonight, just the long walk they're going to have to have back to their seat. <laughs> it is bigger than the belly room. I mean, I'm sure you'll all be great. Uh, Frank Castillo, this is a special treat. This is Frank's first time on the panel of this show. And to show you how far Frank, like how awesome our storyline is, Frank, before he even worked here, was on, it pulled out of the bucket as a comedian on episode one of Kill Tony. Holy shit. I, I'd say episode one. Yeah, exactly. He's Mexican. If you couldn't tell by his uh, yellow greenish. Uh, you're not really brown. You're just like two different tints of yellow and. Uh, I'm passable. You're gray. <laughs> ha ha ha. Ha ha. This is how I laugh. Ha. Hey, where else in America now can you see white people berating a Mexican? All right, besides everywhere else. <laughs> What that guy's laugh over there. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I love this show. You know what I love about this show? A bunch of fucking things. But one of my favorite things is the band. Yeah. Uh, three of the funniest humans. I can't believe I get to work with them every week. It's the Kill Tony, always with a different entrance. This week, here they are. I don't know what they're going to do. It's the Kill Tony band. Tribute? No, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for setting me up there, Pat. You know what's so sad? That's going to be on like a classic rock station in five years, and we're going to all feel so fucking old. Oh, I think it already is, actually. There's like a whole generation that when George Michael died, they're like, oh, you mean the guy who covered Limp Bizkit's face? <laughs> it's the real tragedy of that time. Jeremiah Watkins, fresh off of being on every goddamn episode ever of Rose Battle, a member of my favorite part of that show, The Way. But, uh... <laughs> Pat, how are you tonight? I'm good. Hey, I got a new album called Bad Chad. Yeah, so get that on iTunes, SoundCloud, whatever it's on. Probably all those things. However you listen to music, Joel Jimenez is here. You guys ready to start the show or what? Everything is in place. I have a bucket full of comedians' names. You guys know how it works. Sometimes it's uh, one of the top rising comedians and they do a little bit of time. Sometimes I pull a name out of a bucket that's a completely insane person. You never know what's gonna happen. Anybody can sign up before the show, so that's already happened. You get 60 seconds, you know your time's up and you hear the sound of a kitty. That means to wrap it up then or else you're gonna bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> So 200 coming up live in the main room in March. Foundystore.com for tickets. First name I pulled out of the bucket appears to be the name of Helen Humphrey. Wow, there is no Helen Humphrey. So you know what that means. In the current state of Kill Tony, there was an anomaly that we were once informed of called the Verzi Triplets. Uh, they are either loved or hated. They all used to come up at the same time, and we are experimenting a new thing where we have split up the triplets, and uh, the first triplet to go on his own went last week. It was a debacle. Uh, and this week we're going to try it again. This is a different one. One more time. Alex. Put your hands together for Alex Verzi. Here we go. Sure. Thank you guys, yeah. I am a triplet. My mom had four babies in 15 months. If given birth was a big uh, sport, my mom would be in the Hall of Fame. You know, her, her, she'd have a gold maternity gown, her placenta would be up in the rafters. <laughs> my family's had a bunch of weird pregnancies though. My, my aunt, she just had a baby at 47 years old. Yeah, yeah she had one of those test tube babies because no one wanted to fuck her. She's very ugly, man, very ugly. And it's kind of selfish, too, because no one loves her, so she had to make something that would love her? Very weird. Four, I, I, I was kind of scared, though, because 47, that's, that's old. Like, I thought for sure the baby was going to be retarded. Like, 47 is the number of chromosomes that thing should have had, you know? I thought it going to come out with a helmet on, little, pet his little trapezoid head. I know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having a mentally challenged child, except the next 18 years, but other than that, nothing, nothing too bad. That's all I got. Am I the only one who immediately sympathized with the aunt? Like, I was rooting for the aunt the entire time in that joke. That poor woman had to give three mediocre Christmas presents every year. <laughs> The stubby WAP triplets. Jesus Christ. Dude, I like the part where you call her ugly. I thought that was dope. So this is your aunt we're talking about. Huh? Yeah, this is my aunt. And did, did she have the kid? Yeah, no, she she had a baby. She just had a baby at 47. Wow. Ew. Thank God he'll never be on TV so she doesn't have to hear that joke. <laughs> I mean, it was just mean. It was just really mean. This fucking 47 year old bitch with a weird pussy and she got that with to a baby. Like, what's wrong with her? Dude, I thought it's hilarious. Keep going. <laughs> Commitment to the Durst character, I appreciate it. So, I mean. Yeah. Dude, add more retards to your set. <laughs> Do an act out. Go, mama! You forsaken me! <laughs> I 
<laughs> but what's been happening in your life? I mean, when did you come up with that? You're, you wrote that in the past I, I, I wrote weeks. this last week. <laughs> right. I only wanted to do it one week because Mitchell only had one week, so I didn't want to do anything. And I was trying to do something that I wouldn't, we would never, ever do. And uh, What's been happening in your life in which you think you're different than your two brothers? What's something that sets you apart from your two brothers? Uh, a much better looking than both of them. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. All right. Funny pants. <laughs> No, man, we, I mean, it, it sounds very corny, but we literally do pretty much the same thing. We go, we all work together, we all work construction. Everything you say sounds corny. <laughs> so you're very shallow because you were talking about your aunt being ugly, you're hotter than your other I, I'm, little, I'm, I'm definitely more shallow than my brothers, that's yeah. for sure. I'm Why do you think that is? I feel like verses are like Smurfs, like this is Vanity Verzy, there's Papa Verzy. There's Artie Verzi, there's Closeted Verzi, Balding Verzi. Uh, <laughs> I, I take a little better care of myself than my brothers do. Like the one that's coming up next week, he's a little uh, fatter and less in shape than so I. So like, okay, so if you take care of yourself better, then that's a thing that sets you apart from them, right? Yeah. yeah. So what are things that you do to take care of yourself better that your exact DNA two triplets don't do? I, I definitely go to the gym more, I eat a little better, although Mitchie's getting a little better on that front. He's starting to eat, he's starting to eat better as well. What do you uh, mean by eat better? Like, what do you eat? Well, Sean and Sean... Start eating pussy. <laughs> yeah, I like this fucking early right. 90s <laughs> filthy rock star. <laughs> what, a, what a punk. <laughs> I love that you're just calling all of your different family members out. Like your aunt Pretty much, yeah. Right. 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 Sorry, everybody. I love that you're leaning on the mic like Bruce Springsteen posing for an album cover. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop doing that. Yeah, what a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Every verse looks like they were rejected by different baseball teams. It's really <laughs> wonderful. I could have been in the Philadelphia team. I don't know. Baseball <laughs> <trip. laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, so, so looking back at last week, if you yeah. were to grade who was better, number one or number two, who would you choose? Who do you think? Let's ask him, let's ask him first. Oh, Mitchell probably did better than I did, just from listening, I mean, you listening to the audience, Mitchell probably did better than I did. Hmm. So. so you're the weak link of the triplets. So. Apparently right now I'm the weak you link. You are the weakest link. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the weakest link right now. So. All right, but he, Mitchell has a little more experience doing it solo. I think that was my that was my fifth time doing it by myself, and Mitchell's done it. Oh, maybe maybe spend a little less time in front of the fucking mirror, <laughs> <laughs> and more time on stage, and you can figure something out. Yeah, that'd probably do it, man. I do want to compliment and say that that was great confidence. I know that you like looked at the notebook and you were like, "Yeah, I'm doing the retard bit tonight." <laughs> something that we wouldn't usually talk about and that was apparently that was it so dude i'm all about unmerited confidence <laughs> you may not realize this but 47 year old infertile aunt's the main demographic for the death squad network so she so gonna find out kill tony was the name of the kid <laughs> abortion joke uh so alex yes um you got it right this time Hell. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, is there anything else that uh, you think sets you? How about dating life? You get laid a little bit more than your brothers? Is does being so much better looking than your other triplets? I, I get better looking girls. Sean get laid, de Sean definitely gets laid more, but he's a he's a little less selective. He kind of he pick, he likes he likes he just takes it. Wait, is he the one that had the cold sore? No, that's Mitchie, man. Mitchie. <laughs> <laughs> One of them once came up here with Is there a part of this night where you don't come off hating women? <laughs> I believe in that. One of the I'm already taking deeper. One of the Mercy Triplets one night came here with a cold sore so bad that he basically wrapped a fucking ace bandage around his head. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gigantic Dude, you thing. saw that thing too, man. It was fucking blistering. And I forced him on the front patio after the show. I forced him, and the two brothers were dying of laughter. I'm like, I want to see what's underneath that fucking thing. Well, because he tried to put like a lot of cover up on top of it, and it just made it look even worse. Wow. It was like tanning the, the fucking it was a sweater. It was, it was yeah. a sweater. The most disgusting thing I've ever seen. It's like Joe versus the volcano or something. <laughs> it's a putting oh. green and everything. Uh, yeah, Sean, Sean's getting more ladies right now, but... Alright, well, Alex, you're talking about everybody but yourself, it seems. You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out, like, what goes on and what you, you know... I don't think this, much goes on. This, this Not much thing. goes on, man. I go to the gym, I work construction. Do you think life... You, do you think you get to maybe be a little bit less creative and, like, 
you know, like hungry as a triplet, do you think? You think it's sort of like tough to like have it tough as a triplet being raised in a family that No, if he, he was the third one to the mom's tit, he was even hungrier. <laughs> No, man, I always had so many, we always got to like compete against each other. I don't like that Vince is going to be able to hold this over me, but yeah, we always get to compete against each other, so no, I, it always makes me work a little harder. So do you guys like compete to who can write the worst joke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my goal this week, write the shittiest, most crappy joke. All right, Alex. Can. Well, I mean, you're the second triplet to go. I think, I th you know, there's, it's not a competition between you guys. It's just an experiment to like, you know. Make sure, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck. It wasn't even my idea, Red Man wanted to do it. So well, you know, I kept putting them on every show, so I said, let's no, I'm suck them, them a little and see what not giving up on these fucking Percy triplets. <laughs> do I think they're terrible? Yes! I think they're the fucking worst. <laughs> but I think that there's a fucking spark of something. Stop it. See, when they, when they, off stage, they fucking like hate each other. I don't think they do. They, they literally all sound all like J.T. Barnum right now. You <laughs> sound like a fucking mad scientist. I am. Let the triplet freaks bomb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, like, you're like Vince McMahon and Beyond the Mat. <laughs> He's got to fail. The first, yeah. The Verzi triplets are my Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, there he goes, Alex Verzi. Yeah. Back to being a triplet. We're back to the old puppet Get a normal human being up here, shall we? <laughs> wow. I mean, every once in a while, just life gets you something that you really just can't take away. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you one of the greatest humans ever, one of our favorite guests of all time. She can do no wrong. Some people say she's the goat. Some people call her a pig. Some people, if you haven't listened to this show before, you're in for a very special treat. I give to you the one, the only, Aphrodite. <laughs> To a black church, I can look at you right now and tell you, you've never been in a black church, right? 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 I'm gonna give you a little something. A little something. A little something. This world's holy! You can't be holy to serve the Lord at the same time. Get up, get an Abraham on that. I say you can't hold a lot and please Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? You can't be touching yourself. You can't be thinking about none of that stuff. You know, you have no sex allowed in church. That's why everybody's fucking in church, because no sex is allowed. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they be touching themselves and touching little children. Damn. Oh, my God. I'm about to pick somebody. Good thing I ain't got no children, you know. Y'all might be wondering about the outfit I got on. This is called Go Straight to Hell outfit. What to my mama? <laughs> straight to hell! They don't allow all this ass to be shown in church. <laughs> Tell me again, how old are you, Aphrodite? I'm 61. 61 years old. Yeah. That's the first time we've heard that sermon bit. Is that a new one? Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I met a lot of holes. I wanted to shake your hair and have the other two Verzi triplets fall out. <laughs> I got a little teeth for all three of them. <laughs> That sounded like uh, an opening sketch in a rap album I would skip. Man, shut up, fool! Uh huh, shut up, fool! Uh huh, now drop it like a 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 Sorry, I can't get up. You can do Thank you, Jane Brown. <laughs> you can do no wrong. Uh, hey. So is that really what a black church is like? Oh man, they off the chain with it. They be smoking the hard and do. You know, I smoke a little weed, go to church, you know what I'm saying? Dude. That's not the only way I can feel that shit. <laughs> Tony, the church that she goes to is so black, at the end of every sermon they go, Look that chicken and pie pies! <laughs> I'm trying to remember what episode of Luke Cage she performed on. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't she in Cottonmouth Club? <laughs> no, seriously, they like that at the black church, dude. They, they, they off the chain with it. Seriously. 
Hey Tony. Yeah. Doesn't she look like a 1970s game show microphone? <laughs> That's where she keeps all the rings. I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> you were really something else. You were a piece of work. When's the last time you went to black church? <laughs> oh man, I, I gotta confess, I'm a proud heathen. I ain't going nowhere from <laughs> Jesus or Buddha or Mahayana or none of them. Like, uh, who, did, who does Aphrodite believe in? I believe in weed! <laughs> California is legal! Wow, that's not a who. Weed is not a who. I just noticed her earrings. Maybe the best earrings <laughs> in the whole entire world. They're two little picks. <laughs> Afro picks. Afro! I feel like she takes someone's virginity in a coming of age novel. Oh no, no. I just had to get Jeremiah back. He accused me of losing my blackness the last time I was here. Ooh. So I'm gonna let him know I'm black and I'm proud! Ooh. And I'm here to start a damn riot all by myself. You showing me. I love that. I also love the uh, Russian hat that you're wearing today. Yeah. <laughs> the Russians did not come up with the afro. Let's get it straight. Though. We still don't know no shit from black people, okay? We got no shit, y'all. I'm ready to now. You want to ask her where she got it from? <laughs> does, does I got your, it at the Goodwill. Does your hair match your Gorbachev? Like, what are you oh, man, this is the fact of smoking some good ganja. That I'm telling all y'all ball here. What if the ass was just something. pussy hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna cost you, man. That's gonna cost you, man. Um, and you know you used to pay for it, so shut up. Tony, Tony, oh, Tony. I'm getting roasted by Fat Albert's mom. Oh. Tony, uh, she looks like the creature from the African American Lagoon. Oh, oh. man, you don't put too far back. You show the age now. I used to watch that movie. He nailed it. Did he what? You said you said you like that reference that he just made. No, man, he just. I think he's an old man back there because it was a movie called The Black Lagoon. That was kind of racist, man. Don't be talking about no black lagoon. Talk about it, man. Aphrodite, what if you, uh... If, hey, it was a funny joke. It wasn't funny. It was only funny to the white people. Now, shut the hell up. <laughs> oh, sorry! I'm telling the truth! Joel's been thinking of that joke for, like... Six weeks. Six All his weeks. damn life, he came up with that damn one life. Work that line there. <laughs> that was fucked up, boy. Aphrodite, uh... Do you write your name? Are you the one that writes it? Yeah! You have an unbelievably amazing handwriting. I love how you go over each line. That's right. Name about That's right. seven times. Y'all like right. having the braille motherfuckers up there. These are feelers. Her handwriting matches her voice. <laughs> Thank Big you. And black. I mean, you could probably literally see that. Bro. That's right. That's right. That's my signature. The angry black woman signature, okay? You always do a thing where you like turn away from the actual question and then give like a little performance. That's right. I like your style. Oh, I love you too. What have you done? Uh, what you, so you haven't actually gone to church recently, but I want to know. No, I told you I'm a proud heathen. Gotcha. I want to know about the, your real life stuff though, Aphrodite. Like, what have you really been doing lately? A change? Well, actually, a change in your life? I'm really excited. I'm going to France this summer with a band called Sidewinders. Hey, I'm back. Sidewinders? Yes. When you say you're back, what do you mean? Well, I had double hip surgery. I couldn't walk for almost three years without a walker, so I am back. Yeah. Wow. Double hip surgery. Double hip surgery. When Not you, ass surgery, when, but hip surgery. Okay? When, when, when did you have double hip surgery? When? Yeah. Well, I had the first one December 16, 2014. Came out of the hospital December 30th. Went to band rehearsal. Did New Year's Eve in Grand Park downtown for 35,000 people with 17 staples in my hip. Okay? And then the second one was April 16, 2015, four months exactly, they cut me on the left side, 17 staples here and 20 on the other side. Hearing this is as fun as those surgeries. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't really the answer that I was expecting. Uh, it wasn't Seriously? Your... But it was the time when I told you I was hit the lady in the head with the, the, the bottle of cinnamon. What? <laughs> cinnamon comes in bottles? It's cinnamon. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm in the hospital, I got my spices because you know they got that funny food they serve me in the hospital. I like, I like that Aphrodite is doing a recap of previous Aphrodite performances. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see Aphrodite season three? Previous Aphrodite. I've been returning to my life basically. Like what? What's What's been new lately? Well, like I said, we're getting prepared for this tour to France, right. which is something I haven't done since so 2013. So this group that you're touring with, the Sidewinders, like what are they known for? Well, actually, we've been in the same oh, band before. Oh, oh, that kind of shit, man, some soul. Some soul. Good God. Is it different Sidewinders? Oh, ain't nothing like that, man. It's some real soul. 
Hold on. A See, that shit is dry. You drink it, man. <laughs> so, do you perform by yourself or do you perform by yourself? Hold on, I'm a female host. Side. <laughs> this is a, hold on, we're testing. This is another Sidewinders. I'm looking. No! This is the one. It's, it's, on, my phone. Phone. On, it's on my Facebook page. This only ah, so there's only there's only there's the only other sidewinders we have is the Dayton side. No, it's not them guys. They call themselves it's a pretty used name, but anyway, it's not them guys, man. We play soul music, you know what I'm saying? Effort, baby, you are the most beautiful bowling ball I have ever seen. Oh, thank you. you are just a sweet little thing. Honest, honest question: Is that a win? I told you last time, it should have twenty nine out of five. It really How is. Many times I so like anybody, is that hard? Is that is that like? When you don't learn, are you just dirty? No, <laughs> I'm just spicy. I'm just spicy, little man. <laughs> you keep my ass close on the charge your ass now. This ain't free shit. You know what I'm saying? We be asking women all the damn secrets. Why do I feel like I'm at the post office now? Because <laughs> your ass worked at the post office. Just one of my package, ma'am. Please, ma'am. I will do standard shipping if that's okay. You the kind of motherfucking fire is just for any damn thing. <laughs> What can Brown do for you? Anything you want. Bro, you tell me why so I get more money. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Yeah, that's not Are you getting paid? No, I don't want to be white. I'm Are just you getting white. paid for your trip to France? Yes, sir. Yes, wow. sir. I've always got paid for my job. They just let anyone. Yeah. Uh, I'll play that, that makes her better than any other comic that's going to come up on stage tonight. I'm just blessed <laughs> to be doing, doing this in an industry that's against people of older ages. I fit all the nose. I'm older than they want me to be, I'm blacker than they want me to be, and my ass is way bigger than they want me to be. You know? So I feel great. Three strikes. You know, only flat ass black women make yeah. it in show business. Man, I ain't gonna keep struggling. I'm gonna sell my ass to these white women out here going crazy trying to get booty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a little chunk, a little chunk at a time, you know. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> you can make money. I really feel like we need to translate. You know, you're talking about selling ass, right? You understand? The sister ain't gonna keep suffering. I need to start a church or sell parts of my ass. One, two. You're the only person I know that speaks in a chicken wing dings font. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, half the time she sounds like the alien character in a Star Wars scene. Like, we must fight the resistance. <laughs> hey, man, don't be saying shit like that to black people, man. What the hell is wrong with this dude? Yeah, no, I, know. I, don't think you, I, don't think, I don't think you're getting it up, buddy. We can't understand what you're saying sometimes. I asked him, what the hell is wrong with him? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Thank you, Pam. That feels so damn good. That's almost like orgasm. Y'all should do this sometime. Come on, man. What the hell? No, don't do it. Y'all fuck like that. Y'all fuck all quiet. After that, you let him fucking be quiet. Let him. So you don't always, have, you know, it's always, it's always just a show. You're killing it. Oh, they love you, man. right, guys? I love y'all too. Especially if anybody got some weed out there, I, I really love y'all. There you go. You, I don't drink. I don't fuck with that alcohol. You can get high with Aphrodite after the show. Go That's right. Don't get goes. weed. Don't get weed. Aphrodite, ladies and gentlemen. Let out! He's going to France. If you're listening to this show live from France, get your tickets to Aphrodite and the Sidewinders. Where can they get tickets for that? What, what, what janky ass website do they have to go to? <laughs> what GeoCities page can they go to? Oh. Oh, just got the job. Well, congratulations. There you go. Aphrodite's going to fucking France, 61 years old, living our stand up comedy dreams. While you pussy sit there wondering what you would say. I don't think she's going to France. <laughs> I know this guy, one of the funnier uh, rising comedians who threw out the comedy store. Put your hands together for Whoop Savelle. Oh, it was all a dream. I used to read Dirt Up Magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rap attack, Mr. Magic. Small. I let my deck, my deck, my deck, my deck, my deck. If I was Trump, right after the woman marches, I would just appoint women to every position in my cabinet that has the word secretary in it. <laughs> just not even tell anyone, just have them figure it out. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? This is the most female centric. You know, when uh, Trump got elected, everyone was comparing him to Hitler. And they also compared Obama to Hitler. Really just goes to show you the depth of Hitler's character. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fans of different people. <laughs> That's all I got. That's amazing. I love that. That was fucking beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful Hitler show. Sometimes it's just like, you know. Can you pop? There's a minute if you were one there. Unbelievable joke. How's life, Wub? How long have you been on stand up? Mm, since like, I don't know, 2011, 2010, maybe. Okay. We'll Good call year. that. Uh... <laughs> 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 oh, fuck yeah. So how's life been going? Anything cool happen lately? <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing all right. I, <laughs> this is so I much like... harder for us when they do well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a whole Those thing. are good jokes. They're topical. Yeah, shit's going bad. It's got a weird name. Man. If it was up to me, everybody would just bomb. I'd call them a piece of shit. We'd all have a laugh and we'd die. You know what I mean? But sometimes... We'd all have a party in Aphrodite's hair. It would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> was that a horse or something? <laughs> you did great, so what do you want to talk about? Uh, what's your favorite category of porn? Um, probably gangbangs. Gangbangs? You like yeah. you like a lot of people in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, if I could be there This too. is the part of the show where Brian asks what kind of porn you like and then tries to turn it into a gay thing as fast no. as possible. <laughs> Oh, it's all you like uh, women only, so like you're afraid if there's a guy in the room. No, it's interesting where if there's a guy, you might just look at the guy. It's interesting when people say gangbang because that's a lot of people instead of something personal. Or do you have problems with your relationships? Obviously, you like social settings. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if other people are fucking, I will fuck too. Yeah. I think the thing with the gangbang. I think the thing with the gangbang is Dude, that Tony, this guy's dope, man. <laughs> He, he does have the stage presence of the last guy in the gangbang who's just waiting the whole time. Awesome! awesome. He knows he's look, got the biggest dick. Look, man, I get if you're tired, it's okay. You go home, we'll just reconvene at a better time. Yeah. Hey, Redman, you want to know my category? Yeah. Finger blasting. Uh, wow, they have a porn category for that? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Oh, so what? Any, uh, I mean, that's fun stuff, that Hitler joke. Did you come up with that recently? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of seeing all the posters. Trying to make it Hitler. That's <laughs> the ones of Obama portrayed, you know. Yeah. That first joke that you were doing, did you ease off of, did you have more to the beginning or to the end of it, or did you just feel the room and then switch to another joke? Because it looked like you were like, ah, uh, that joke wasn't... Like there, are, there are some parts to it, but I don't, sometimes I don't always do them, you know? Uh, I forget them. You, you, and move on, as we saw. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It was Just nice. think of when someone wins Rose Battle and you're like, man, I bet that guy's whole life has changed. No, the next night he's just talking to some dude named Wolf. Yeah, yeah. there's not that much different. How long of a set do you have, do you like, like, would you say you're comfortable with? I don't know, man. Five, ten minutes. Oh, really? really? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any special skills or talents other than stand-up comedy? Wait, 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 wait. You said yeah. you've been doing it for five years and you only have five or ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, that's well, kind of... Well, I can sit up here and be like, oh, yeah, I'll knock out an hour. No, I mean, like, you know, so, you know, if you have, like, a good 15, good 30, after that long, I would expect... I've that. done 30 before, but... Like do you it. perform a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah I perform all the time. What do you you look like every person that brags about not owning a television. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do for work, Bob? I do bar trivia, like I host bar trivia, and then uh, I also do some copy editing, like freelance. You look real excited about that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, I've got 50 fantastic. minutes on bar trivia, 5 minutes on stand-up comedy. <laughs> Are you a gifted wubber? <laughs> <laughs> I used to I teach martial sad. arts. He did I play music. One step. <laughs> I used to teach martial arts. I, I can play music. What kind of martial arts? Kung fu. All right. Wow, wow. really? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well, my friend Wub, it appears as though by the sound of those drums, you know what that means. He uh, just <laughs> bores the board into breaking itself in half. <laughs> Welcome to another you don't want to be hey. together, do you? Hey, Tony. <laughs> Why don't you split? Tony, can we do a high kick challenge? Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, can we get oh, some no, kung fu music, maybe? I can't, maybe? Can't do I can't wait. I think you could do it well. I, I had leg like, surgery last year. <laughs> wait, <laughs> did you have double hip surgery? <laughs> so I can get wider. <laughs> did you practice in MMA? 
<laughs> what happened to your back? Herniated a disc. Had to get surgery. It was like bedridden. Is there something that you were doing? Bedridden. I think it was probably from lack of doing stuff. <laughs> Is this like if a guy from Crash Test Dummies just had a conversation? <laughs> Once there was this guy who used to do karate, now he's failing at stand up there. He does bar trivia. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hmm. You guys are starting to whoop me the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the uh, what's the uh, craziest thing that you've ever done and gotten away with? I fucked a stripper for like a year, friends with benefits, like no condom. Dude, I knew this guy was dope. <laughs> The reveal was so sad for her. That's right, honey. We've been straight up raw dogging the entire time. I might be a father. Whoa. She so, was dancing jumbos. Wow. So she was dancing jumbos, and you stumbled in there one night, had threw back a shot and a beer, and you see her come out. No, I met her online. Oh. And then what happened? Uh. Went out on a date, fucked, you know. And then so it just stayed yeah, that way for a year. She was a one night stand. <laughs> was it like you guys were dating or you guys were just fucking? She was just At first we tried to like date for like, I don't know, a few weeks, but it didn't work, but you kept fucking for a year. Yeah. Good job. Damn. Oh, wow. Is Look. she is she the you said jumbos, right? Yeah. The contortionist is it's not no, this was, this was like, I don't know, eight years ago. I was thinking if we dated the same girl. That's all. You guys ask him Jumbos brother. is the most honest name for a shrew <laughs> Jumbos, you know what this is. <laughs> no bullshit. We have jumbo-sized holes in our hearts. <laughs> so what? Dude, that's my boy Batty Reagan right, right there. I did not expect it to end with of our hearts. <laughs> you were fucking a stripper for a year. Yeah. So, yeah. when did that end? At least one of you is revealing parts of yourself on stage. <laughs> Did you notice one's going missing out of your wallet? <laughs> Did the money she gave you ever smell funny? I wouldn't take that money, it's fucking nasty. <laughs> yeah, but you put your dick in it, that's dope. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> we got another kind of weird massages. We need a fun black lady to clean this up. I, I, won't, I won't dare touch that dollar. But here, let me catch anything you might have. Very impressive mentality. Well, um, so you made it out with that. No STDs, huh? Yeah, actually none. It was, uh, though she did contact me afterwards <gasps> to say, I do have something now, so go get checked. Oh, you almost made a jumbo what, mistake. What was it? <laughs> oh, herpes. Oh. Oh, oh, she had herpes. How recently after fucking you without a condom was this phone call? In which simplex was well, it? A few months, probably. <laughs> you almost had a whoops a daisy. <laughs> the champ as your new reigning defending wrist belt champion right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a whoopsie daisy it's my Someone. instagram name <laughs> is it really yeah oh wow jeez look at you bro look at you got a little plug in there uh so what yeah, matches that's... your fun personality <laughs> yeah well let's uh Figure something out. Like go have some go have some more fun. So we have some more fun stuff to talk about in between uh, you telling really, really, really funny Hitler jokes. <laughs> there he goes. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? He is on Twitter. Wow, well, at Whoopsie Daisy. But yeah, it's his Twitter and his Instagram. I said it was his Instagram, but it's also his Twitter. He got that? That's awesome. Interesting that he chose Instagram, probably because he knew that I was gonna say Twitter. So he got a plug out clean for his Instagram. He looks like a guy who writes smart Hitler jokes. Well, this is fun. <laughs> really is fun. You guys are having fun. Yeah. How many fans like awkward episodes? It doesn't need to be violently loud. We don't do those, re you know, repetitive chants or anything like that that like the WWE and other shows do. <laughs> to keep the energy at an obnoxious level, I like to let you guys relax every once in a while. You like that? Do you guys want to? You guys want to yell things? Yeah. You do? Go fuck yourself.
clap your hands together for Jamel Dotson, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so how does this work? We just get a minute? Alright, well, this is an interesting time we live in, isn't it? I think so. Everybody's concerned about all sorts of shit, like Trump's out there doing basically what he said he was going to do. I feel like we're missing one really big question, and that pressing question is about Melania Trump. Hostage or hope? Come on. Like, it's a very big question. It's a pressing question. Like, hostage or hope? Like, I don't know how to discuss her. Like, like should we, like, be talking shit about her, or should we be staging a rescue? Like, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a very important question. I don't know. You know, hostage or hope? Like, I'm, I'm, am I the only one waiting to hear about the human trafficking? It's just me? I'm the only one? Like Melania Trump, the human trafficking, Russian mail order bride story? You can't, nobody, that's too much? You never thought about this shit? You say it's deep? You never thought about this shit? Seriously? Like, she's been quiet. Every while, you know, because he's like, shut the fuck up, bitch. He's like, he possesses her. Like, you never thought about that shit? Like, you're gonna find out. It's like, I got her for a very good price, you know? <laughs> I love that that was topical material from someone with a Livestrong bracelet. <laughs> As if you haven't acknowledged the last 10 years. <laughs> oh, smart ass. You've <laughs> been making nigga jokes this whole time. I don't say that word. at that shit, too, and doing like, I don't know, Trump supporters and... <laughs> Oh, it was too close to home by the white folks. That's why. Hey, hey, Tony. Let's keep going. Tony, I like yeah. how. I mean that in a positive way. Positive way. Jamel, Jamel. <laughs> stick with us here. Jeremiah, go ahead. I like how he looks like a little yachty but sounds like Bagger Vance. <laughs> Free from Jamel. I look like a little yachty but sound like Bagger Vance. It's a great cinema check. What out. the fuck? <laughs> Jamel, Jamel, over here. Where are you from? I'm back to you. It's, y'all made some crazy comments. Jamel, you, stick, you with us, stick with us. Stick with us. Y'all don't have black friends, do you? It's uh, I do. <laughs> Yeah. Ones, but not black ones. Keep... No, my friends are pretty I mean that in a positive way. I do. I do. I mean I'm making a little black. Yachty reference. My friends are pretty black. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, the majority of people that listen to rap music are white. Well, the guy made a little Yachty reference. What? Huh? What happened to your world? Come back. I'm focused on you. It's, it's going to take way know. longer if you analyze every reference. I'm sorry. I think you might be a little bit ADD, Jamal. <laughs> You're, ADHD. You're, you're, you're like if Snoop Dogg didn't smoke weed. He <laughs> <laughs> like, had been literally But still turned into a dog. <laughs> For shit and good. Where are you from, Jamel? I'm from Indiana. Oh, Gary? Haha, <laughs> that makes sense. Demographically, that does make sense. However, I'm from uh, Bloomington. Hmm. <laughs> There you go. I got a cup. Uh, Is there a lot of white up, people in Bloomington? Yeah, there's all white. I can tell. I don't know how, but I just can tell. Boy, well, I know you very well. Anyway, keep going. How long have you been in LA? Uh, like a week. You visiting or you live here? Now? Oh, hell no. I had to escape. I'm out. I'm here. You live here? Yeah. Oh, very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's right. Congratulations. That's right. Awesome. How old are you? I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> what, not a fun why age, you, you look way older, and I mean that in a positive way. Oh, okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. I got gray hair and shit. It was crazy. You said 30 like you were lying. It's not that I. It's not that I'm guessing that you're lying because you look older. I'm guessing you're lying because of the way that you said 30. I'm 30. You're 30 in the same way that Melania is a hostage. <laughs> yeah, she's having the time of her life. Total hope. Oh, well. <laughs> so, wow, is this something you've always wanted to do, move out here? Uh, yeah. What did you have going on in uh, Bloomington that held you up for 30 years? <laughs> uh, family. Oh, you have a family there? Pretty much, no. Uh, my parents, you know, my oh. family, not like my Oh, I just kids, assume so. because of your skin color that you abandoned a family <laughs> there for a second. I'm going to let that ride. I'm going to let that ride. It's cool. Hey, tell it's me. your show. You can do it. <laughs> they do it on other people's shows too. I Somebody this. was supposed to speak up and be like, no! Oh, there it is again. Yeah, I'm You're sorry. Jamelling I'm up on me. 
Uh, so how are you going to survive out here? What do you do for work? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to survive. Like I'm, you know, this is an interesting time. Like sounds like, like a minority to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that, that's, he's a Mexican. <laughs> you can make that. Joke. My own people. I'm DC That's your base. You know? no, I'm I full know, Mexican. It doesn't count. You're full Mexican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're minorities. We're yeah. supposed to be in the. In, you came for me. No, I'm, we're together. We it's 2017. I don't know what to think. No, no, what was These are your own people. People who say they're 30 and don't look like. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do for work when you were in Indiana? I worked in uh, youth development. Youth development. That's I like how I say that. Like, like what? everybody looked at me like what? They, I couldn't. No. It's just surprising that you're in youth development when you're wearing a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Indiana. What is having a pocket knife? If yeah, I you, we don't do that in LA. That I wear pocket knives. Work. You don't. You never been to the Midwest? Or anything I'm like from that? the Midwest. I'm from Indiana. Uh, and what? Brownsburg, Indiana. Okay, then you understand. And this is what the Midwest looks like. Yeah. And so a white guy with a saxophone. What is more Midwest than that? Yeah, that looks like Gary, and that looks like Indiana. Gary, <laughs> <laughs> Indiana, job for the win. Uh, no, I keep pocket knives and shit like this just to blend in in places I don't belong. How like on stage. <laughs> How long have you been on stand <laughs> <laughs> Chanel, how long have you been doing stand-up, Chanel? That was good. That was good. Yeah. You, you know it hurt when he was like, that was good. <laughs> it, it was good. It was like we would kill you after the show, and I mean that in a positive way. I can't tell the difference. Um, still haven't heard this question? I haven't. How long have you been doing stand-up? I don't know. Like, about a decade. <laughs> a decade? About a decade. All in Bloomington? No. Where, where? I went from Indiana to Atlanta to D.C. Now I'm here. How often would you get up? Every day. <laughs> so once or like multiple times? I would say multiple times. I like how everything this dude says sounds like a lie. <laughs> yeah. Ten years. Is it sure most of the way? Time. I don't know. I really I said it was a women. weird judgment. Like, I feel, this is a, this is an interesting time, like, right, this feels awkward, doesn't it? Yeah, you're on, like, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on, This works for, like, when you keep commenting, be quiet. You have to say, check out. He's a part of the show, he's a part of You know, but he keeps saying silly shit. Like, you're about to say some dumb shit. I like how he thinks silly shit is just funnier shit, you know what I mean? But just because it's fun, like, Trump is funny, you know what I mean? He says shit, but you see, you know, you're comparing me to Trump, you know, I'm concerned for the future. Like, uh, this is definitely a person who does not like the wave on Twitter. Jamel, <laughs> <laughs> you're a weekend to living in Los Angeles. What neighborhood are you living in? Actually, I'm, I'm in uh, Pomona. Ooh. Why Pomona? We're sad. Uh, why, 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 why Pomona? Why Pomona? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got some family out there, you know. It's good mind, sure. It's cheaper, I can afford to live. <laughs> She far is that from here? That's like 30, 45, 45 minutes, depending. Not too bad. It's cool. Okay. They got real quiet. They weren't funny. Do you have any other, other than stand-up comedy, any fun hobbies, anything special that you can do? You like a yo-yo chanting or something like that? Anything good? Yeah, that's what I do, backgammon. Uh, I've been a backgammon champion. Is that a joke? Um, You're making a joke. I mean, and you feel right. like every time he answers a question, it's a different split personality <laughs> taking <laughs> over. <laughs> it's like no, uh, there are no real, you know, hobbies, nothing like that. I don't what do you hobbies. like to do? You know, uh, when you want to, you know, relax, what do you do? You put on a TV. You know what's weird? Like, this is pretty much all I do is write uh, and do comedy, and that's pretty much it. Smoke, I get a chance to smoke because that shit's legal here. You know, which is all shit. Right. It's not in Indiana. Aphro Aphrodite of... just uh, sent cat piss up in the air. Which is... <laughs> she just started spraying something. She squirted on my shoe. I, I, I spoke with Aphrodite. What, what's the biggest thing you've done in comedy? The biggest Aphrodite? thing? Aphrodite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right around. 
so I don't want to do that. Well, like you said, been doing it 10 years. I mean, fuck, but to date, fuck, given that I'm here in L.A. right now on a podcast with you. And this, some silly shit. And with some silly shit, this, yeah. is, this is the biggest shit I've done. Oh, yeah. that's great. Well, yeah, it's great. So, thank you. I mean, I already knew that. What's the second biggest shit comedy. that you've done? Second biggest shit. Like, can you name a comedy club that you've performed at in uh, Indiana or Atlanta? Dr. Grace. Yeah. Dr. Grace. Uh, come on. Uh, like, there's only one that's comedy at and that's the comedy at uh, They don't really fuck with Is that me. where you started? Uh, no, I didn't. Where'd you start? I went down before them. There was a Bears where, Place. Where'd you start? Uh, Bears Place. Was, Bears Place. Uh, which was with Comedy Caravan, the large, mm-hmm. longest running comedy show in the Midwest. Uh, like, you know, so they were the shit, and that's where I started off as, as a host. And I moved up through that comedy attic, didn't necessarily like black people. So, uh, you know, I, <laughs> this is some shit. I mean it in a positive way, you know. So okay. he's, yeah. he's getting on us. I was going to it, it's like, I'm like, positive you know, He came to the city know. with nothing but a dream and a catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it in a positive way. Why should I have to pull punches? Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah. you're going to say that you until know? it appears on a t shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is the best episode. No else time. I might be able to make some money over. Anyway. No hobbies, so, no so. real, not much of anything. Are you helping too? people, that's what I like. like help really, I, that's my hobby, is helping people. Helping people, like who have you, like, give us a... That was a whole, I told you I was in youth development before. But give us an example of someone that you helped in your history of youth development. No, youth development, all right, say... Your everybody. favorite little story, a person that you helped, not everybody. I but, don't have, you know, any favorite little story. It's just about being able to help people really access privileges and things that... You, you know, can't tell me one thing that you did development to use. Not this one is, uh, memory where you you're like, oh, this, make up a name. this kid I'm didn't know how to stay in the lines in the coloring book, and I'm like, stay in the lines, and then he be, like did an art thing and won, or anything like this that. This is the worst episode of the first 48 I have ever <laughs> Hey, that was a drummer, bro. Joel, <laughs> man. This is the dumbass section, bro. Yeah. No, it has been going on long enough for him to redeem himself. In terms of just having individual stories of quick anecdotes, like I'm not out there to go out and gain donors, which is normally the people that have those quick stoner, uh, like quick stories, they get money from people. I'm not really trying to get money. You know, it's just about really changing lives. And I know I've done that, and I put people in the school. So, you know, if you need something specific, hang out with you know, but generally, I know I've impacted people, and that's all. I love that. Sounds like a why to me. Uh, that's awesome what you do. I help it. The TV into my car. Well, it was nice to meet you, dude. It was true. Good luck. I didn't mean to make it so awkward. I'm sorry, mildly combative, but I appreciate it. Next time, just listen and breathe a little bit. Oh, we're home. Listening's good. Or else you're going to get distracted from everything. There's so many lights up here. Yeah, it's a it's a real, it's a real professional show you signed up for, you know. Glad you figured it out. Twelve minutes into uh, twelve minutes into you being on stage. Jamal Dawson's on Twitter at Hoghead Cheese. The only 30 year old man to be born in 1971. <laughs> <laughs> ben Palmer. Looks like a new game. Ben Palmer. Thank you. Thank you. I need to ride home. I've got a ride up here from somebody. I have a car, but it just doesn't work. But I still keep it for storage. Someone actually tried to steal it from me once. It was late at night, and I was just going to get something out of the trunk, and then out of nowhere, this dude comes and he's got a gun, and he's like, Give me the fucking car. I'm like, shit, you can have it. But it's broke. (laughs) He's like, well, what's wrong with it? (laughs) I don't know, man, it's making this clicky noise. (laughs) He's like, is that the timing bell? (laughs) Oh, 
Actually, it might be. <laughs> He's like, well, pop the hood. Let's take a look. So he fixed it for me. <laughs> he gave me a ride up here tonight. <laughs> there you go. That's Tommy. That's great. We held back the last time we were there on that. I wanted to see where you were going. Yeah. That was, uh... Really good. That was thanks. It was yeah. good. Thanks. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Giving up the theme of fun, energetic black person followed by a sad white guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really, uh, you really like painted a great picture fast, and uh, I wanted to hear more. I could just listen to you until I fall asleep for like ten more minutes. <laughs> I, I want to hear you describe dialogue between two people forever. Yeah. I mean, he said with rainforest and I said. I felt like I was watching a dope one woman play. <laughs> Super dope. Ben, welcome to the show. This is your first time on the show, right? Second time on the show. Second time. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? Um, I'm from uh, the Midwest, Ohio, originally, and I lived in Atlanta the last five years. What part of, uh, what part of, what part of Ohio? Uh, Cleveland, Akron area. Oh, very cool. I'm yeah. from Youngstown. <laughs> nice, nice. Columbus. Did um, we talk about this last time? We did. Yep. Uh, what do you do for work? Uh, right now, uh, I work for a company that licenses YouTube videos, like funny videos. I'll reach out to people and ask them uh, if we can give them money to license their clip. Oh. You should watch this video, it's really hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna laugh so much. <laughs> yeah. how, much, how much do you have to, wait, you, how much do you have to pay to license this video? It depends on, um, like, what kind of licensing. My job is just, so I'll watch, like, a clip on YouTube, and then I'll have to find the person who posted it originally. Because a lot of times it's, like, in a compilation. And, and then, super um, sounds of the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right! That's what we figured out. Is that you have the exact same voice as Stephen Wright. Whatever he was like, Stephen left the bizarro Stephen Wright. Wow. So, Ben. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing it, man? I've been doing it for twenty-one and eight years. Get it to say twenty-one. How the fuck is that possible? You to twenty-one and say twenty-one. 2021. I gotta say, there's nothing sadder as a comedian when the sound effect gets the biggest laugh of the night. It's like the machines took over and we're obsolete. I wait until Skynet is in control now. George Baker selection. That's funny because the last time I did it, I think you did that clip the same time the whole time too. So Ben, uh, yeah, yeah. how do you get into the yeah. YouTube business like that? Like how do you I got lucky, man. I just um, someone sort of posted saying they're looking just for content. Just keep on going. Shut up. Keep going. 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 I don't know who is talking to right now, or if it's someone who's the board, is it me, or is it... <laughs> there you go, Ben Palmer. Good answer, by the way. Oh my god. Really good answer, totally understood. Huh, do you always wear sweaters like this, like a trademark thing? No. Or a no, terrible, terrible accident? Oh, I'm serious? So, come on, okay, come on! Kidding. No, I'm kidding, I'm actually a fan of it. Thanks. How long have you been in LA now? Three months. Three months? Yeah. How old are you? 21 and... Probably in red then. 21. I totally, by the way, forgot that sound effect existed when I asked Your roast question. battle season three champion, Stephen Wright sound effects. <laughs> but, uh, I wonder what his record would be if, uh, yes. sons of bitches. Ben, anything else interesting about you other than the fact that you sound exactly like Steve Wright? <laughs> and uh, you have any like special hobbies or skills or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I like to troll. I do trolling. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. oh my god, that is so funny that you admit that. Yeah, it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> that is what I imagine they look like. So. <laughs> yeah. Who are some of your favorite people to uh... Yeah, is it YouTube or Twitter? What's Reddit? Facebook. What's Facebook? Oh, yeah. oh what's what's great? So, uh, do you want to hear what I, who I troll? Yeah. All right. So, um, I just women shouldn't be going to troll. So, uh, we can just the people that I troll. Uh, All right. So, I troll uh, angry customers on corporate Facebook pages. I pretend to be. Customers. Don't clap like he's fucking Robin Hood. All right. He's sad and lonely. 
Wait, do you do that for the? Uh, I, uh, I'll be like Home Depot. Someone be like Home Depot. You fucking dicks. The piece of plywood fell on my toe, and I'll be like, from Home Depot. The fuck you. you know? <laughs> but it's deeper than that. Someone needs to stick up for the corporations. <laughs> so you like make No, it's not for the corporations, it's for the service team that works for the corporations. They get shit on for no reason. I like this. I like I'm this. confused though. Do you, how do you so, go in as the how do you respond as Home Depot? No, uh, I make a page called Home Depot or just customer service and I use their logo. <laughs> so they when they click on it, don't they see that it has zero followers or whatever? Yeah, but uh, most people don't really stupid. understand. They just yeah. immediately yeah. just attack. Yeah. yeah. It's, or it just doesn't matter. and It's like, fuck you, whatever. It's fun anyways, you know? That's so awesome. The greatest <laughs> trick the devil ever pulled was making people think they were on the Home Depot Facebook page. <laughs> You're like an evil, awesome genius. Thanks, man. All right, so I also trolled, uh, I have trolled, uh, you guys know Joel Olstein? Yeah! Yeah, hey, fuck that fucker. Yeah, fuck that guy. If you've ever seen uh, Joel Olstein, that was me. I don't know if you saw that. Um, no, we did. Uh, <laughs> Instead of Olstein, it was Olstein, because he's old. <laughs> did that bother him? Did he attack Well, um... They, the Houston Chronicle picked it up, and then uh, his spokesperson like made a statement, and uh, they were actually pretty cool about it. <laughs> was it God? Did you feel shitty when they were the devil? Did you feel shitty when they were pretty cool about it? No, I didn't. Uh, not at all. <laughs> so Joel Olstein, <laughs> oh, what other uh, what other great troll wins? And then uh, well, before I left Atlanta, I got a bunch of parking tickets, and so then um, I made a <laughs> City of Atlanta page. And then just posted like I worked for the city government. Just shit like, fuck it, just be wherever you want. But, <laughs> so then, what do you do? Like, do you use hashtags and stuff for people to like stumble across it? No, I'm on Facebook. I do all Facebook. Why Facebook? Well, of all the places, uh, Facebook. I don't know, it's just for dumber people on there usually. No, that's not true. Yeah, it, it is. is. Of course it is. Really? It's definitely. It's dumb people on Facebook. Oh, yeah. It's okay. really bad. All right, all right, sorry. I mean, you know, you use more than 70 characters. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I just, I, well, Facebook, I can respond. We use more words, so that helps. Have you ever had, like, an obnoxiously long post on Facebook? Like, what's your longest post? The longest post. Yeah, sure. One time I wrote some guy, and it was, like, 10 paragraphs long. And his question was, like, one sentence. Well, <laughs> do you remember what the question was? Uh, I don't remember. God damn it. Uh, one time, I like that you spent time three hours doing that and he was the one being pranked. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I pulled a fast right. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I do a show where I use a projector and a screen and I put um, the stuff that works on stage and I kind of narrate the trolling. That's great. You do a Thanks. troll show. Yeah. That's so where do you do that at? I want to go to that. I did it at Sketch Under Fest the Bridge. Past week. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Um, and yeah, wherever I can. Um, I'm touring over the next few months, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. One of my favorite things is, is that, uh, I think it was Subway, you, they have like, they, they got TVs in all their locations. And yeah. They would have like the news and then they would have like Subway like tweets that they prove. Like, like, hey, I love Subway, like on the side going. And then I posted a photo of like a Subway sandwich going, this is the best thing ever. But when they approved the tweet, I could tell when they were, like people were downloading or watching it, so I changed the photo, like because it was on my uh, website. I changed it from a Subway sandwich to a. <laughs> Did someone seat? interrupt him with the Stephen Wright sound effects? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it was a goat seat. So when you're in Subway, they approved the tweet that says "I love Subway," and it's supposed to show a sub, but it was replaced by a goat seat of a guy doing their asshole. <laughs> wow. Maybe, yeah. we, maybe we can maybe we can replace that part of this podcast with uh, something funny. Yeah, before. that story was as fulfilling as eating at Subway. <laughs> ben Palmer. Thanks. All right, buddy. Thank well, you. Nice to see you. There you go. Yeah, yeah, thanks. He's on Twitter at Palmer Ben. I keep trolling, trolling, trolling. 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 I pulled another name out of the bucket. Looks like another new one. Joy Eileen. So, I got sexually confused reading my kids a bedtime story last night. 
and I'm going to share it with you guys. Let's find opposites in John's building yard. What's the opposite of soft? That's right. It's hard. <laughs> opposites are fun to find. First in front, and then behind. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. If you guys aren't going to laugh, I'll laugh. <laughs> opposites are always right. Some are loose, and some are tight. John can push, and Jack can pull. Joy was empty, and now she's full. The opposite of wet is dry. John said hello, then waved goodbye. <laughs> I wasn't going to smoke a cigarette, but you guys aren't having any fun. So. <laughs> Holy shit, Joy Eileen. That was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Joy. That was terrible. <laughs> I love how no one had a boner during that. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Red Man, so what did you do at Subway again? <laughs> well, see, I took a photo and I put it on my web server and I just renamed it. Oh, Joy, is that your first time? That was a bedtime story because we were all put to sleep. That's the first time that's actually bombed. That's the first time that's oh, bombed. Where is it killed? We where got another, Tony, we got another liar on the podcast. <laughs> Are you also 30? I mean, when did, where did you do this that, that it killed? Like Honestly, Barnes and Noble? No, no, Barnes and Noble. That's funny. I'm a romance author, so that's funny. Good job. Jesus, that wasn't funny. <laughs> No, um, Flappers, it, like, a week ago... Enough said! Hey guys, that is a reputable... That's a cool place. Jeremiah and I sleep in bunk beds in the Flappers Eater room. He and I, that was the ten people I brought, said it was hilarious. Jeremiah's bed is shaped like really a sax like case, and mine shaped like a guitar case. They're flat so... The subject of your comedy is truly brown, groundbreaking. Your just timing is impeccable. If I had one thing to add, it would be that I'm lying right now. <laughs> you need two things. A drawing board at your place and a ride home. <laughs> okay, what's going on over there? Let's close that notebook. Um, Joy. Is this going into the double bombing? What is this, Tower 8 coming down over there? Tower 7. Jesus. Tower <laughs> I can never remember that now. It worked at the Aleppo Comedy Club last week. They were never, all drunk. Never, re my never remember. My pet loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Joy, stop talking for a second. Uh, so when you say that it killed at Flappers, like how when I say how long have you been doing stand up, what is what's your answer to that? It's been almost a year. A year, and how often do you go on stage? Not that often. So, I have three kids. Sure. So, Got gotcha. Yeah. I know, you read the, <laughs> you read the, You read very, very interesting. Like, I mean, that's clearly not a children's book. It is. The, what you said. Yes. <laughs> so, how, how many people... It's in my purse right now. Hey. <laughs> did, did you... Where's your purse at? Where's your purse? Right there? Oh, Holy whoa, 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 somebody just threw a fucking book. What is this, the little boy you've been reading to? Oh, that's Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. I like that you're trying to blame the bomb on the person who wrote the Bob the Builder book. No, it I wasn't think... my words, it was this dumb fuck. I will take the bomb. Yeah, Bob the Builder is a kinky little fuck. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a random house bomb, it was an on purpose. The opposite of wet is dry. Blah, blah, blah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my god. It's a super chubby book, too. Can we bomb it? Yes, we can. <laughs> what if it was called Bomb the Builder? Is that the, is that the, is that the, 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 the baby daddy? That is the baby daddy. Holy oh shit. Like, yeah! <laughs> triple, triple babies. They're not the Percy triplets, are they? You guys aren't the parents of the Percy triplets. Oh my god! You really like mother like sons. Although he did get more laughs than I did, so fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, truly, you're not really going at it that hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. How many spots do you think you've ever done on stage if you had to guess? Ah, uh, Three, ten, six, ten. ten, ten yeah. Right, yeah, you're a little baby. You didn't even do the mic stand. <laughs> um, so, did you do those ten times? Did you always do the Bob and the Bill? Bob and no, the thing? no, no, no. Because I'm, like I said, I'm a romance author and I'm a massage therapist, so I've done oh, a lot of shit. Oh, I'm going wow. <laughs> Romancing the hot stone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, any like, are you successful in the romance novel field? Have you had things published? I'm indie, 
So I'm self-published then. So yeah. But I mean, you can go on Amazon and I'm there. So. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Uh, any, what's the kinkiest thing that happens in one of your romance novels? Or in real life. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. I want to know what this fucking well, mad we dog can go is. Well, we can go... What do you drive for a living? Therapy. What, what kind of, you drive something for a living, am I correct? Oh. No. Oh. All right, fuck it. Anyway, back to you. Um, I actually have a book under a different name, um, under Patty Cake, and it's two lesbians, so that's Ooh. the key. What do the two lesbians do? What do, do they, two lesbians? Each other. Well, they're roommates, and one roommate is trying, she's a virgin, and she's like trying to get a guy. And Seems her, super well written. That's the story of Pat Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> How many different things have you written, Joy? I have five books published. How old are your kids? Awesome. Five, ten, and fifteen. Five, ten, fifteen. <laughs> Mathematically. Every five years, you guys just cream pie city. Huh? The first one's not mine. <laughs> dude, that's what I call sex. Cream pie city, dude. <laughs> How long, have you, how long have you been with your uh, man over here? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. Oh, fuck. Wait a second. But you said 5, 10, and 15. The first <laughs> one. <laughs> you get every five years, it's like cock work. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Have you ever had a lesbian encounter before? No. Well, I think you should. You I think you should bring it home. To, for more for better books, right? More realistic books. Research. Yeah, audience feelings, red bands. It's like, it's yeah, like sure. if WWF's China was a housewife. <laughs> Joy, the subject matter of your comedy is truly a, a groundbreaking. Oh, it's okay, this thing you work at, Pat. If I abandoned shit, bro, it would be that I'm lying right now. All right. See, we should have both abandoned the books. <laughs> oh. Oh. Joy Irene. Get out of here. There she goes. Joy Irene. Hey, it's me. Joy. I'm gonna let you get... I've never let anybody get out on their one lap, by the way. That's a kill Tony first. There it is. I knew not. So fun. She's still contributing more to this world than we ever will. <laughs> Uh, if you're wondering, our one current regular, Ali Mikofsky, is in New York City. She just went to New York for a month or two and was extremely featured on every single uh, the booth. morning show. She was with Shia LaBeouf. She's the girl that when Shia LaBeouf got arrested on the video that circulated <laughs> everywhere with her hand up. So we let her go to New York to go do stand-up out there and now she's... Basically, the he will not divide us, like the <laughs> face us. of an entire movement. You right now. Divide us. <laughs> Literally, you not divide us. they just keep repeating it like zombies. So I don't know what drugs she's tried. Smart. Smart. <laughs> he will not divide us. 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 It's very frightening. But hopefully, uh, when she's done with whatever cult she's joined temporarily, when she, she'll be back on the show. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Kevin Kelly. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and trans and non-gender identifying primate mammals. I hope you're well. I was thinking about our nation's motto the other day, you know, the one Congress changed in 1957 to In God We Trust. And my question is this, y'all. Which God is it specifically that we trust in? Is it the white God or the black God? Is it the brown God or the green God? Is the guy with the lion's face the guy with the hawk's beak? Is it the guy with the snake tail, the eagle's wings? Is it the land god that makes the earth quake or the sky god that throws lightning from the heavens? It's the god on currency. Is it, uh, fair, fair. I'll give you that one. Is it the water god that throws tsunamis from the ocean? Is it the god that says to kick gay people off the roofs of buildings? Or the god that's like, yo, slavery's a great idea! Is it the god that hates women? Or the other God who hates women, or the other God who hates women, or the other God. Thank you, Los Angeles. There you go. That is 
one of the funniest manifestos I've ever heard in my entire life. Are you gonna shoot the place up now? Oh, no. Thank, thank God it's over. Hey, hey Tony, can yeah, I say something? Which one? Pacifist. Okay. I, I usually hate hecklers, but that dude was dope. Uh, it is actually funny that you say that. I sort of agree on that one. Uh, I like the other guy I took credit for. It. That was great. And I usually hate slam poetry, and once again, I'm right. <laughs> Kevin, how's it going, my man? How you doing? I'm well, Tony, thanks. How long have you been doing stand-up? Stand-up? Uh, about a year. About a year? Yeah. How often are you going? You look like one of the guys that gets trolled by the other guy that was on stage. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Whoa. <laughs> Do people not know what this show is? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, so about a year. What, uh, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, build things on the computer. You build things on a computer? The computer. Uh, software engineer. The computer. The main computer. <laughs> the main computer. <laughs> what types of things do you build? Uh, programs, mm -hmm. systems. And Anything fun that we would know about? iPhone, the iPhone 2, <laughs> iPhone 3S. Uh, that's fun. He looks like Steve Jobs. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Uh, well, I know he does it. Steve Jobs now, maybe, but... Whoa! Oh, you look like a dead man? Oh, you don't look like Steve Jobs. And why are you so poetry with me? Like, is this your normal act? Are you, like, this, like, intense? Do you go to flappers also? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I don't do flappers. What do you do? Uh, make art. Where are you from? New York, originally. How long have you been here? L.A., about two years. Two years. A little over. What do you prefer? Why do you prefer LA over New York? Uh, uh, no winter. LA, it's kind of like the island from Lost. Every day is, every day is a little bit the same. Yeah. Uh, New York, you get four true seasons. Right. And the winter's out in, uh, in the east. Very when aggressive. You're, when you're dragging a bloody body, it leaves marks in the sky. Whereas out here, it just sort of blends into the street. You look like you're performing until your wife comes back. <laughs> I'm doing this for you, Sophia. You had wonderful hair that was the color of the sun. You seem a little out of breath. Like, were you changing a diaper before you came out here or something like that? Uh, I'm winded. I'm winded. I have uh, asthma. You do? Yeah. Do you have an inhaler? Not on me. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, are you having an attack right now? No, you're good? Cool. Quit asking him about it, dude. <laughs> You're seriously not having an asthma attack right now. <laughs> like, your heart is starting to beat faster as people are asking you more questions about your asthma. Are you good? I'm good. All right. You're good. Thank you. Resume. So, so, so Kevin, what, what do you think your main point that you were trying to get across during that thing was? Ah, uh, well, if I had to, if I, I had to... I get it. I thought you were just going to pull out an AK-47 and be able to shoot at you. No, no, no. Heaven's, heaven's no Tony. I'm a, I'm a pacifist. Uh, but I do think, I do think uh, now, more than ever, uh, the world's first secular republic be allowed a word or two. Wait, say that one more time? I said, I, I do think that now, more than ever, what with the, the climate being what it is, uh -huh. the world's first secular republic be allowed a word or two. If I had to... Oh Red Man is one dirty dog. You have to eat that one. You don't know who else to jump, but I eat. Could I just say... Could I just say that was still the least intense part of the last five minutes? How hard did you get so? I mean, I had to... 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 I had I thought I genuinely got shot. Uh, I can imagine that's what it would be like. You would just hear a lot of bang and it's just sort of like, oh. I just shrugged that shit off. I was like, huh? Dude, we all got shot like 30 minutes ago. We're all in purgatory. You look like you're having a roast battle with yourself. <laughs> Kevin, why do I feel like you have one of those, like, apocalypse shelters? What are those called? I, I think it's a, uh, no, it's a, uh, bomb. You know what it is. It is, it is, it is a shelter. Do you have one? I don't. Do you have, like, do you have, like, bulk items, like, uh, stacked, like, prepared just in case something would ever happen? Do you live by yourself? No. Who do you live with? Uh, my partner. Ooh, lovely. Really? Yeah. Like, uh... 
<laughs> and Rollins. Like what people think you are, Tony? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the fuck is going on in here right now? The fuck? I like that Brian tried talking and didn't work. He's like, back to the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm good at. <laughs> du -du 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 DJ Garage Band. <laughs> hey, Kevin, how do you think the world's gonna end? Uh, our world? I do want to hear this. Guys, okay, so, so look, so humans are one species on a planet with hundreds of millions of species. We're on one, one planet. Do I have to watch this TED talk that goes around one, where, where we, we, we order one star? And that's How long star. is this? How long is this? 30, 30, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Keep going, keep going. We got, we got one star in one galaxy, and that's one galaxy in a cosmos of a hundred billion galaxies. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a billion stars in our known Yes. <laughs> So, again, our, our, our inconsequential human primate mammal, I am. Alright. Our society's doing well. The rest. Red Band is one dirty dog. <laughs> the power of the bat. Um, Kevin, any other uh, special. Imagine a tunnel of light. <laughs> What, what was the end of the whole thing? Billions of billions envelopes of stars. Your cerebral. Well, I, I mean, you know, we're we're one planet. We have life on yeah, yeah. one planet. There are hundreds of billions of planets. Yeah, in, first in, day in of kindergarten, we we got that part. Yep. Right. <laughs> so what? How, so how does this world end? I probably the same. All worlds end. You know, we'll, we'll so use the kind of conversation you hear when you're leaving the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking true. <laughs> so, are you good at sucking dick? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna work from home today. Serious question. Pat Reagan with a question from Three Point Range. Oh, never, never done it. Pat. Never done it. Sorry. There you go. Dude, I'm, like, I'm into finger blasting. It's all good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Save it for marriage. It's sweet. <laughs> so when you say Second Republic, I don't know, there's something I feel like... I feel like we're almost somewhere with you here. When you say that... Republic. Oh, secular republic. Right. Secular. Uh, I thought that you were like starting a cult or something. Oh no, we, we Americans, we, we as the the world's people, first a secular republic. <laughs> we gotta change the world one comedy podcast at a time. <laughs> Kevin, what else do you do? Uh, as much as possible. To, to, uh, to be honest, with you. <laughs> stay, stay, stay busy, guys. Have you met my there really has been out. a diversity of creepy white guys on this show. <laughs> oh, shit. If you get all the white guys together, it is a disturbing police lineup. Like, it, it's so <laughs> uncomfortable. I, I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like this might actually just be Whoop Savelle if somebody hit him in the head with an aluminum bat after this. <laughs> You guys remember what from earlier? Look just like a. I'm not understanding this reference. Kevin, anything else you wanna mention? Favorite thing you've ever done in your entire life? Favorite thing? Yeah. I drove a helicopter to the top of the Alps and jumped. It was. That was so fucking intense. Yeah. And jumped. Like, like you're a human Mountain Dew commercial. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was Code Red style. It was as real as the streets. Wow. As real as the streets. <laughs> See, when There's a massage therapist if you need uh, any work. <laughs> My shoulders are tense. Yes, just your shoulders. <laughs> so you went to the top of the Alps. You took a helicopter to get there. Yep. Right? And then you jumped out with a parachute, and did you land on the top of the Alps, or did you like glide no, along no, them? No, I don't get no, it. no, it's it's uh, you know, you're you're above the Alps, and you just kind of you're there, you're like fifty thousand feet up, you're suspended, you're looking over, and then you just jump, you land on the ground below the Alps. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't jump from on top of the Alps to the Alps. Duh, Tony. Yeah. Awesome. I'm learning all about the Alps. Awesome. So, uh, you, with a parachute. Yeah. How far of a jump was that? 15,000? 15,000, 14. I raise you 2,000. <laughs> oh my god. We should make like a cow and move on. 
<laughs> there he goes, Kevin Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to meet you, Kevin. There he goes. He's on Kevin Kelly underscore. Sometimes after a more cerebral a more cerebral episode, that's what I'll describe this as, a cerebral yeah, episode. <laughs> Faux cerebral. Very cerebral. Faux cerebral, not cerebral. It's pronounced pho. <laughs> I think you don't realize I'm saying an entirely different word, but, right? Dude, what? <laughs> uh, there's a guy here who went up for the first time a few weeks ago that I want to see go up again, specifically. He made his debut here, and it was so fun to watch him work. So I'm just gonna bring him up. We're gonna have one last comedian come on, and that's the end of the show. How do you guys feel about that? We fell in love with, we fell in love with this guy the first time we saw him here a few weeks ago. Put your hands together for Mystery Dan, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, Tony, but sadly this may be my last appearance here because if the uh, New England Patriots win the Super Bowl, I will kill myself. I have bet every last cent I own on the Falcons and uh, spent the last of my money on a 9mm Glock and a box of bullets because they won't sell an individual pack. You know. <laughs> So I'm, uh, you know, I'm just waiting for the game and the outcome because I, I just can't imagine a God that would allow five New England victories in the Super Bowl. I mean, there would be no God. I wouldn't be afraid of hell or anything. It just, that's it. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, wow, good job, Tony. Looks like there's just no way for us to avoid the theme of tonight's episode. I'm, uh, I'm glad you let Kevin's partner tell his side of the story. <laughs> Dan actually did. You, 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 you are gay, right? And yes. You, and you uh, lived for, we talked about this last time you were on, you lived for decades in the closet, and then you just said, fuck it, moved to West Hollywood and started butt fucking everything, right? That's yes, pretty much yes. the story. Yes. Just to catch you guys up. <laughs> I did a few episodes ago. Surprised you're not a Packers fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's probably it isn't Fistery Dan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like he exclusively travels by hot air balloon. <laughs> Are you a Patriots fan because you're their logo? <laughs> <laughs> I still, I feel like he still calls trains locomotives. <laughs> I feel like he paints his face to look like an Indian now when dumped tea into the ocean. <laughs> he looks like he's on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood Watch List. <laughs> It's just so good to finally meet Captain Crunch. Fuck you, Lynn Manuel. This is the real Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna really shoot yourself? No, no. I, I don't Damn. even follow football. I just. <laughs> oh, what? Mocking those who take the game too seriously. <laughs> Great job. You thought there was something human about him, but he deceived you. And then he takes his face off and it's a snake underneath. <laughs> Foolish humans! <laughs> you fell for the music of mystery dead. Why did you not listen to Kevin? <laughs> mystery Dan, if you were going to be an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Boy, that is a hard one. Um... <laughs> I'd probably go with crow. That's what? A crow? Yes. Why a crow? You get to fly. They're very smart. How long are you and Aphrodite gonna be in France? Hey! Uh, oh my God! You, you wouldn't date Mystery Dan? No. Oh, you, you guys would be awesome together. You, you two walking around would look like two eternal trick or treaters. <laughs> One night, Both your hurricanes could cry at each other. One, one night as kids, they went out trick-or-treating and they just never separated. <laughs> Ebony and Ivory! <laughs> hey, Red Man is a dirty dog. 
Mystery Dan. So, uh, I don't know if we got too much into detail. You have a boyfriend now, Mystery Dan? Oh, you're no. Just, you're no. just playing the game, uh, right? No. Dan. I, I'm, I'm a lone wolf. A lone wolf? Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the animal you probably... <laughs> I feel like if Robin Williams was alive, he'd play you in a movie and win an Oscar. <laughs> Don't be sad at that, he stole jokes. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like, what kind of guys are you into, Cut, or, uh, Mystery Dan? I like the young Quakish types, but these days we just... Say that again? Quaker? Wait, say that again? Say Quaker? Say that again? And then Mystery Dan's like, no Latinos, please. Oh, <laughs> White zone. <laughs> <laughs> Two in the twink, three in the stink. <laughs> Did you, uh, there are some mysteries better left undiscovered. <laughs> Mystery Dan, did you vote in this last election? Well, yes, I did. Whoa, you made it. And Mystery Jill Stein Dan. would have made a great president. <laughs> no, I voted for Hitler. You did? Yes. Oh, God. Were you yes. with her, huh? <laughs> yes, I was. Wait, Aphrodite, did you just say, oh, God? Yeah. Were you a Trump supporter? Hell no. Who'd you, who'd you vote for? How was Green Party? Aphrodite doesn't want to have to do jury duty, yeah. so she, uh, she skipped it. Martin and the Vandalics! <laughs> but actually, after the inauguration, I... I wrote in the Sidewinders! <laughs> <laughs> they should be the goddamn president! <laughs> Signs for everyone who sat behind her in a movie theater. <laughs> I love her. Over there. Come on, go on the sign. She's like, she's like part of the set, but she's not part of the set, and she's on this podcast. I love it. You're like swapping quivers. <laughs> Jesus, Mike. <laughs> you can't see or hear what's going on. <laughs> okay, relax, Aphrodite. You relax. Pipe down. She gets excited. Mystery dance. So what's something crazy you've done like in the past couple weeks since we've seen you? Like just real talk. You don't have to try to be funny. Just something interesting that first thing that pops in your head. I went to the Broadway theater thing that they had downtown the other night. They opened all the theaters. It was really fancy. Oh yeah. All the... That's, that's, that was supposed to be Broadway, pretty all the major theaters, the old ones, the Broadway. Ones. Did you buy a new cape or wear one of your old ones? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite candy? Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate? Yeah. What kind of chocolate? Sweet chocolate. Oh, Dark chocolate. Dark oh, chocolate. Oh, Dark oh, chocolate. Oh, 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 you know that would just make too good of an ending of a big episode, now wouldn't it, after day? Wouldn't want to put a big black ribbon on this whole thing. <laughs> oh, is this what the... Alright. Huh. Mystery, Dan. What else do I want to know about? What's your favorite kind of porn? Oh, Jesus, Brian. Really? The mystery, Dan? You're going to throw that mystery, Dan? I feel like you have a portrait of yourself in your house, then the eyes move whenever you walk up. <laughs> In a way, I do. That is true, Mystery Dan. You were one of my favorite characters on the Guess Who game board. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, have you always had that cool white hairstyle like that? Uh, I just quit dyeing it about five or six years ago. What color did you dye it? It used to be brown. I used to try and keep it brown, but now I just gave up on it. And now it looks like Board of Education. <laughs> so, uh, is it true that you are running for president of 1786? <laughs> uh, you look like you invented the word filibuster. <laughs> What's the craziest thing that you've ever done and gotten away with? We asked the one earlier, turns out he was raw-dogging a stripper for a year. How about you? I want to believe he wrote the children's book that she read from. <laughs> Bob the Builder. I feel like you've been chewing that same piece of gum for like hundreds of years. <laughs> it was the first piece he invented the gum. <laughs> they, they called it Wrigley. <laughs> 
He's the only person that's gonna die of tuberculosis now. <laughs> if he knows how many licks it takes to get to the center of the Disney ground. Specializes. I was going to go home it's tight. Yeah. He's made up of pure imagination. <laughs> Tell us something about you that we'd be surprised to know, Mr. Dan. Anything. You I to... beat the Grim Reaper three times in the last two years. Yeah. Wow! Are you fucking serious? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. In what? Chess? In your afterlife parties that you guys have? Uh, I thought he was just like, I'm not touching this one. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the Grim Reaper's a total twink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you came for you and you bent him over and butt fucked him. Huh? <laughs> and left creepy long gray pubes all over his black suit. He's pissed. Wiped it off with his fucking gym. Hey, Mystery oh, Dan, have you ever owned a chandelier store? <laughs> no, but I do enjoy them. I would love for someone to say, I want to speak to the manager, and then he comes out. Are you right? <laughs> I've just been hanging around the back. It's a chandelier store, you motherfuckers. All right, Mystery Dan. He was in the play that Abe Lincoln saw. <laughs> oh, mystery day. All right. Well, what can I say? You are one interesting character. I mean, let me ask you this: what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what has the Grim Reaper failed at? How has he tried? Like, what first is... time I, I had a concussion in a steam room and I took about a four foot head dive straight. Wow, you were in a steam room wow. butt fucking <laughs> so hard that you. I was alone in the steam room. Oh, wow. I was jerking off so hard. And I, and I thought I was dead for about a two minute period. It was truly trippy. It trippy. If you <laughs> thought you were dead, you weren't dead. <laughs> Interesting. So you hit your head, got a concussion, did you go to the hospital? Yes, fortunately no damage other than I had to get six staples in my scalp. Ooh, wow. <laughs> scalp staples. My, my scalp tore open. And, yeah, and, so and, they, and they decided to flop that wig on there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so con concussion in the steam room, a huge masturbating accident. And how about the second time? How'd you almost die in the last two years the second time? I almost choked on the total around. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm laughing at that, but I have no idea what that is. What was the second it's time? It's the Jeremiah Watkins of don't, Candy Bars. Don't time. be shy, Mystery Dan. Tell the truth. The second time was I was stabbed yeah. in a racially motivated attack. And they just <laughs> made me scared and I was a little bit of a Fuck you. Yeah. Wait a second. So I heard, I heard of the racially motivated attack, and then you might as well have been Aphrodite speaking to me. Uh, what did you say after that? What? Racially motivated attack. Yes. And what? Yes! Ooh, yes. You did win! They told me to exit stage right. All right, even. What, what happened in the racially motivated attack, and how many times did you say the N-word before you were stabbed? <laughs> It was the style at the time. Did you have a job? I happened to be at a Burger King, 3.30 on a Monday afternoon. Ooh, ooh, an afternoon hamburger. He was wearing the crown that time. There were these two young black dudes bullying everybody there. And, and you said, you know what? I almost died from jerking off in a steam room recently. I'm going to stand up for these kids. I'm Mystery Dan. Hello, officers. I believe I'm a part of a racially motivated attack. <laughs> so there's two These two ruffians are disturbing me. <laughs> what were the two young black kids doing to, uh... How old would you say that they were? Dragging their teeth. 20. I'm trying to enjoy my Whopper Jr., the twink of sandwiches. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mystery dance. So what are these what are these twenty year old kids like saying to other people when you say that they were bullied? What were they doing? Every word was the F word or the N word. Uh, but they're allowed to say the N word. And freedom of speech. Yeah. Well Yeah. What do you what do you think you're the what do you what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think? You're the you're the well, king of Burger King or something like that? <laughs> the fact that he said Edward is the real mystery of the night. Yeah. Okay, so they're calling people this, that. What do you say? 
uh, somebody, See, we said, need staff somebody makes a remark about those people. And I said, well, every group's got its lowest 1%. Uh-oh. And the thug overheard that and said, what did you say? And I said, every group's got its lowest 1%. And he said, what that mean? Oh, shit. I really didn't think oh, I was going shit. to ask. Oh, shit. I really didn't think it was going Mystery to solved. Ah. Statistical analysis involved in this. So wait, you know, wait, 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 I really wait. don't think you'd understand. That's what you said? Yes. And then what did he say? Then he continued to bully the wait staff for another five or six minutes trying to get a rise out of me. Then he sat on the food counters trying to stare daggers down at me, looking up and down the street, make sure no cops are coming. And then he boldly walks up to me and says, anything you say behind my back, you can say to my face. Did you so tell him you fought for his rights in the Civil War? <laughs> <laughs> so he... What, what was most telling in the instance was the self-righteousness in this asshole's voice. Anything you say behind my back, you can say to my face. So what did you say? Well, then he stepped back and sat back on the counter. So I said to him, as this is an eating establishment, I will thank you to take your ass off that counter. That, that's literally what every white guy says before they shoot a black kid. <laughs> he proceeded to jump off the counter, stab me in the neck, throw me to the ground, beat me about the head and neck. Fortunately, I caught his first fist with my forehead and broke his hand. Ooh. He was unable to bruise this face. Did he know that my skull was made of titanium? <laughs> oh. I then started to got up and said, don't you ever disrespect a black man like that again. And then I yelled, world star. <laughs> You got up. You better believe it. Holy shit, Mr. Dan. You were I was starting to get angry. I was just trying to enjoy my nuggets of chicken. <laughs> this is an establishment of eating. <laughs> okay. So then what? You're bleeding out of the neck and you stood up. Like, a, like this is like passion of the Christ at this point. I mean, you're bleeding out of the neck. You've been beaten in the head. You broke his hand. He issues a few more challenges him. I stand my ground. He walks out the door. I follow his pussy ass up. Metro some more standing ground. Scream and get back here, you pussy. I wasn't going to dignify it with an N-word, which is what he, what he wanted, I think. Probably. Yeah. Not what I thought you were about to say, seriously. I was like, oh, oh okay. I mean, after someone stabs you in the neck, I think you might be allowed to say it after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh! This was, coincidentally, the same day you could not escape the image of a white police officer throwing a young black girl to the floor in the seventh grade day. It was that day. And after I was freshly stitched, I went to CNN with that tape playing up ahead to say, see what you have wrought. But unfortunately, security wouldn't let me through. <laughs> I don't know what just happened right there. Dude, okay, so the third time it's you almost... because they're fake news, bro. <laughs> so the third time you almost died mystery, Dan, what was this one? This one was really fun, uh, strange. I, I was... Oh, this one was strange? <laughs> you getting stabbed in the neck in a Burger King? Well, I, it's I, only I, a flesh wound. <laughs> Well, one day I'm taking. Uh, you think I bleed blood like a mortar? <laughs> well, one day I'm taking a piss and it's red, and I think that's not right. Oh, uh, you can't. You had hemorrhoids. I had a uh, bladder tumor, uh, which miraculously turned out to be benign because I have an older brother who had bladder cancer. What if this is like the saddest Final Destination movie? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. That may be it. <laughs> wow. Death is almost catching up to your creepy pedophile thing. <laughs> huh. Well, that's interesting. You're a fucking survivor, and you survived up here again tonight. How long have you been on stand up again? That was just like your first time a few weeks ago or something? Well, this is about four months now. Right. So, oh, right. this is the first time on a real stage. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Wait, are you time. saying that the belly room isn't a real stage, mister? Well, I mean, that's second time I mean. Second time. I... Do you want to get fucked this stab in the neck? <laughs> yeah, dude. Do you want to be history, Dan? Jeremiah <laughs> 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 Watkins. All right, there you go. It's mystery, Dan. Thank you very much. Sorry, turn of other people to be here tonight. God, there's a lot of news in that bucket. 
check out uh, check out the drawing from Ryan J. Belt, everybody. Give you that live for you, man. What's up? I'm touring stand-up wise everywhere at twentyinchclip.com. Frank Castillo just won last night. He won Earth Battle season two. Frank Castillo is on tour at Frank C Comedy. Frank, the letter C, and then comedy. So follow him now. And the Mike Lawrence, right? Mike Lawrence, Rose yep. Medal Season 1 champion. You're, yep. you're only two Rose Medal champions ever. Uh, Chipping car. Uh, check out dates for you at what, Mike Lawrence? Um, uh, I'm writing on a show called uh, Drop the Mic that will premiere later this year on TBS. Awesome. So, you're right. Mike Lawrence, Joel Jimenez, the drummer, is on Twitter at Mostly Sorry. He takes me over to Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah, hey guys, I'm at Jeremiah Stan. Make some noise for Jeremiah Watkins' performance tonight, everybody. A little bit tired now. Hey, at Jeremiah Stan, reach out to me on social media, bro. All right, yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm connecting with the heckler from earlier now. Uh, you know, catch up on Roast Battle, and then the Comedy Jam comes out in, uh, in March on Comedy Central with Mike, which Mike Lawrence uh, wrote on his part, too, so I've been working with Mike Lawrence all year so far. Matt Reagan, Patty Reagan, P-A-T-T-Y-R-E-G-A-N. Listen to my music. He's the band leader here. Listen to his music. His new album is out uh, on iTunes. On Spotify, Bad Chat. Spotify, that's Bad Chat. He's the leader of the Kill Tony band, and the reason why Jeremiah and Joel Jimenez are here. One more time for Pat Reagan. Uh, yeah, all that and more. I have a pro wrestling podcast called The Store Horseman. We just got back from the Royal Rumble. Fun times over there. Pony Hour, TonyHinchcliffe.com for all that other fun stuff. Red Man, take us home. Good night, everybody.